because he's got something to say to you. And he's got something to make sure that you understand as he lifts you, as he lifts you up. So we're going to speak today from that particular time. And I'm going to encourage you to keep your ears open, your mind open, and especially your heart open. Because when he speaks to you, you need to be ready to hear it. Amen? Because he's got something for you. So before we get going with this message, let's open with a word of prayer. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you for getting us up this morning and bringing us down here, Lord, so that we can come together corporately, Lord, as our minds and, and our hearts are open to receive this message. I pray, Father, that you help each and every person out there get this message, Lord. Let us sink down deep inside their hearts and take root. And then each and every one of us would come to understand, if nothing else, Lord, understand one thing. That God is close to you. He's close to you. And He's dealing with you. And as we understand that, I pray that you bless each and every one of your children that are sitting here now. So thank you, Father, so much for all that you do. You are awesome and wonderful. So Lord, as we continue and go forward, I pray, Father, that you would come and that you would speak to your children. That it wouldn't be my words, it would be your words. Yes, Lord. That you would speak through me, Lord. And Lord, I just want to thank you so much for all that you've been doing in our lives. Not only theirs, but in mine. And Father, I want to thank you even for the hard times. Even for the bad ones. Because, Lord, you're helping us to understand and to learn how to deal with those things as we turn to you. So thank you, Father. We love you and we praise you. And we ask all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to speak to you today for the name of this title called When He Speaks, Are You Listening? Amen. Do you know how many times God speaks to us and we miss it? One of the things that we need to understand is that if you belong to Jesus Christ, then that means that all your steps are working. In other words, God already knows you're predestined. You are predestined to meet certain people. You're predestined to be put in certain situations. Why? So that you can take care of it. And God will bless you for it. These are ways that we do. We take care of other people's needs. We reach out and we help folks. Why? Because what it does is he takes and he places wonderful things in our account in heaven. If you belong to him, you got a bank account up there. Ain't that something? You got a bank account up there. And I'm going to tell you something. Nobody can mess with it. Nobody can steal from it. Nobody can do anything. It is there. And so God has got plans for you. So my focus statement of the day is that communication with God is always, and understand this, it is always two-way. You understand? When you pray, it's two-way. If you're just praying just to, just to be saying something, you know, don't you want God to respond? Yes. And so you need to understand this. He will respond. And He'll respond in multiple different ways. That's the wonderful thing about it. And it's a wonderful thing about it because we need to learn how that, how that happens. My function statement of the day is that we need to listen intently. In other words, open up our minds and our ears and our hearts. We need to, we need to listen intently for the voice of God. Now, have you ever heard the name, your name called and didn't know where it came from? Yeah, yeah. Does that ever happen to you? Now, I ain't, I ain't talking about when you was high. 
He was out there running around. Because I'll tell you right now, when I was high walking the streets, I'd hear my name all the time. I'd look over a man, and I could have swore I saw somebody duck behind the tree. You know what I'm talking about. Maybe you even wondered if it was your name at all, and you could start doubting yourself. Was that my name? Or was it just somebody screaming and yelling? Was that it? Have you ever heard your name called and you thought that it came from somebody else? Just to find out that it wasn't them at all? In other words, you know, you get people that, that you know are out there and they, you hear your name called and you look over and they, they're like, they don't know anything about it. You just heard it. Where did it come from? Listening for your name from one of your close friends is one thing. But listening for the voice of God is quite another. Amen? Amen? Quite another. Now I want to ask you a question. And I want you to think about it before you answer. Because I'm not talking about a feeling, but an actual voice. Audible. And I also want you to think about what he might be saying to you. And if you did hear his voice, and what kind of effect would it have on you? I mean, because if you don't hear the voice of God, it's going to have an effect. Listen, God never says stuff to you without a reason. Like, we'll say stuff to, to people and it just don't mean nothing. But when God speaks to you, He's trying to get something to you. He doesn't waste words. You understand? He speaks because He has something to say. So was He warning you because you were in danger? Could that be what it was? Could be. Was he trying to help you communicate to someone else that needed to hear from him? Because many times people just ain't hearing him. They're not listening. But God wants to say something to them. I'm going to share some of that with you too here very shortly. Sometimes he uses other people to talk to us. Amen? It brings up, I'll tell you something. He uses my wife a lot. My wife will come and she'll tell me something. I never ever just disregard what she has to say. Because she's smarter than me. I ain't gonna lie to you, she is. You can give me that five bucks later. <laughs> because I'll tell you something, we may not be in the right frame of mind to hear from. Them. Amen? That happens to us sometimes. That, that happens to me sometimes, at least. God uses my wife to get my attention many a time. And it's funny, when, when he does, because the look on her face changes. And I notice it. It almost seems like she loses all expression. That's when I go. And I look closely at her. Because I know that the words that are coming out of her mouth are not hers. Amen? She gets kind of a vacant look on her face. And I can tell that she's about to say something that I need to listen to. God uses my wife a lot. She's quite smart. And I'd be a fool to sign her off. Amen? If I were to disregard what she says just because she's a woman, I'd be a fool. You'd be crazy. Amen? First of all, two heads are always better than one. Amen? When God put us together as man and wife, He had a plan. He had a plan. He wanted to give us double the brain power. So me and Lucy got 2%. Two percent. No, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> and besides all that, God gets on my case if I don't treat her with the proper respect. Now, you guys that are out there that are married, you know what I'm talking about. Or even if you got a girlfriend that you're serious about, you got to listen to what she has to say. And don't disrespect her. Don't disrespect her because if God puts you together, He don't want you, you know, disrespecting her, not giving her the proper respect. If I say something mean to my wife, the voice of the Lord comes through loud and clear. That's when I start. I hear Him very, very sharply. I can hear Him. Has that ever happened to you? Yes. Yeah? You say something, you do something wrong, you treat somebody wrong. And it doesn't have to be your wife. You just did something wrong. You treated somebody wrong. God speaks to you and He starts bringing it through loud and clear to let you know what's up. 
you step out of line and God speaks to you. And you know it immediately. That it's Him. All of a sudden, you know exactly what to do. When He speaks to me, I, I, I'm like, Okay, Lord. Lucy, I was wrong, honey. That's right. I'm sorry. Um, you got any money? <laughs> no. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just get to apologizing immediately. Amen? Amen? It's important. And you know something, gentlemen, let me tell you something. And women too, don't be afraid to apologize. You know, even if even if you're right, if you just want to get rid of it, you can tell them, I mean, you know what? I just want to get rid of this thing that's between us. I'm sorry. You know, and yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. Yeah, again, so it's good to humble yourself and be able to just get rid of that thing and bring your relationship back together. Yeah. Hearing the word of the Lord, now it's a wonderful thing to experience if you've ever truly heard that. I mean, it's really deep to think that God cares enough for you that he's willing to open his mouth, the creator of the universe, and speak directly to you. That's amazing to me. Yeah. Amen? But sometimes it's even more amazing if he does if he does it audibly. So I gotta ask you a question. Has that ever happened to you? Now when I say audibly, I mean just like I'm talking to you right now, you hear it as clear and distinct as my voice is right now. Audibly. It happened to me. Amen. That's wonderful. <laughs> Audible word of the Lord. It comes becomes the most grave sometimes and pressing it comes with a, a grave and pressing responsibility to what? To obey it. To obey it. Amen? To obey it. Now where in the Bible would we hear someone going through this very phenomenon? Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel 3 and we're going to read 1 through 18 and let's stand for the reading of the Word of God please. 1 Samuel 3 one through eighteen. First Samuel chapter three, verses one through eighteen. Yes. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli, and the word and a word and the word from the Lord was rare in those days. Busy for work. It happened at that time as Eli was lying down in his place. Now his eyesight had begun to grow dim, and he could not see well. And the lamp of God had not yet gone out. Sir! I need help! Say, yes. The righteous are attacking me! The word is going to tell me. They're on 4E! And they don't feed me! Look it up! Verse 6 again, everybody. The Lord called yet again. And the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here, here I am. Verse 4 and 5. Verse 4 and 5. And then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call him. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he answered, I did not call. My son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord nor had the word of the Lord yet been revealed to him. So the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. Then Eli discerned that the Lord was calling for him. And Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down. And it shall be if he calls you, that you say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Then the Lord came and stood and called it as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Yes. The Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel and which both the ears and of everyone who hears it will take. In that day, I will carry out against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to judge his house 
forever for the iniquity which he knew because his son brought a curse on himself and he did not rebuke him. Therefore, I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. Mm. So Samuel lay down until morning. Then he opened the door of the house of the Lord. But Samuel was afraid to tell the vision. What was that, 15, right? Hmm? 18. 18. 18. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, here I am. He said, what is the word the Lord spoke to you? Please do not hide it from me. May God do so to you. And more also, if you hide anything from me of all the words that he spoke to you. So Samuel told him everything and he had nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Yes. Let him do what seems good to him. Yes. See, ladies and gentlemen, what Samuel heard from the Lord was something very, very deep and devastating. Yeah. You know, it was a devastating thing. Eli let his sons run amok. Yeah. They were in the tabernacle doing stuff that they shouldn't have been doing. They were sleeping with the girls and they was taking the food out of the pots and stuff that was sacrificing the meat that was going on. They were eating the fat. They were doing everything that was wrong and against God's laws. And so God was going to judge him. He told him, he warned him. He warned him. So what does that tell you? Ladies and gentlemen, God to me is warning us. Is something going on in your life that he wants you to stop? And I'm talking about grave sin. You know, grave sin. Stuff that, that you should be doing. And especially if you know that you are born again. That you are a born again believer. Are you living your life in sin and doing something that you shouldn't be? Is God speaking to you? I'm telling you he's speaking to you because he's using me right now. Right. To tell you. It's time to square these things away. Stop doing them. Walk away from it. Because if you don't. What does it say here? God will not. Put up with this stuff forever. Amen. There comes a time when he will pass judgment. So. As we can see in this passage, God wanted to establish a line of communication with Samuel because he was teaching Samuel how to respond to him. Amen? He was teaching him. He, now, now something, he's teaching you right now too. And many of you have already heard his voice. Many of you have already heard him speak silently to you. You've already received his messages from the Word of God. And maybe sometimes you've even received his messages from the daily bread and anointed writing. God uses many, many things sometimes to communicate with us. Now because God had plans for Samuel, he was going to make him into a great man of God. But if there was one thing that you could believe, is that if you are going to be a great man of God, you are going to have to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord and make sure that you obey it. Yes, yes. So what intricate details do you think God was trying to teach them at this right young age? Well, first of all, we need to remember that a word from the Lord was rare in those days. So it didn't come very often. Okay, it was rare. It was infrequent. So people were not used to hearing from the Lord. They were just used to going and doing whatever they felt that, they, that was right. So it might be easy to ignore it or make a mistake on how to respond to God's voice back then. But fortunately, in this case, Samuel had Eli, who was up in years, and he recognized what was happening to Samuel. And he told him what to do the next time that he heard the Lord's voice, when he heard his name called. So God, God was teaching Samuel. He was teaching. What was he teaching him? First of all, he was teaching him how to recognize the voice of the Lord. Now, this was the first time that Samuel heard God's voice. In fact, like it says, there was a, a, a time period where a lot of stuff was not happening. The Lord was not speaking. 
In fact, there was a 400 year period that God was not talking about or communicating with people, even his prophets. Okay, so he started speaking when Samuel came. So now this is big. This is a big thing, man. Samuel's hearing the word of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. He didn't just call him once. He called him a bunch of times. When God is getting ready to do something and he wants to let you know and he wants somebody to find out what's happening, he will concentrate on you. He will do it over and over and over again. Let me tell you something. I remember one time I was, my friend, I had a buddy of mine that I rode motorcycles with. Some of you might remember this, this story. But I was sitting there, and his wife, I had found out that his wife was messing with another friend of mine. Now, I normally did not get into people's business. This was before I was pastoring this church. But I'm sitting there, and I'm having a a drink in front of me. This was years ago. So I'm having a drink in front of me. And she walks through the door. Now when she walks through the door, I look up and I see her. And then she's a friend of mine. So I look at her. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I mean as clear as I am speaking to you now. He said, Tony, she's sleeping with so-and-so. And I went, who, who said that? <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, what do you want me to do with this? So I didn't do anything with it because it was kind of really, really uncomfortable. And I didn't, I could not understand what he wanted me to do with it. Let me explain something to you. When God speaks to you, he speaks to you because he didn't do it by accident. He wants you to do something about this. Amen? So I didn't say nothing to her at that time and she went on about her business. About a month later, same thing, sitting there and she comes walking through the door and the Holy Spirit spoke to me again. I mean, I felt like Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. You know, he, was, he was like, he's going, Tony, Tony, she's sleeping with something. He was like, letting me know something. She's sleeping with so-and-so. Once again, I didn't say anything. I just kind of, well, okay. And I, I just waited a third time. She walks through the door and the Holy Spirit speaks to me again. Tony, she's sleeping. So I thought this time, I said, well, you know what? I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to open up my mouth and I'm going to say something. I'm going to say what God is telling me so I know it's true. So she comes over, she sits by me, we start talking, and I said, you know something? You don't know her. Her name is Norma. I said, Norma? I said, you know what? I said, you know that I'm a Christian, right? And she says, yeah. And I said, sometimes God speaks to me and he says things. He tells me stuff. He reveals things to me. I said, you know what he told me when you walked in? And she said, what? He told me that you're sleeping with someone. And she went. She was busted. I mean, just like that. And I, I didn't want her to hurt my friend's heart. Yeah. And it also hurt the other guy that was involved. It was a thing that was really, really bad. So I just sat there and she looked at me and she goes, That's why I hate you Christians. <laughs> See, she can't, you can't hide nothing from God. Amen? That's right. You can't hide nothing from God. You might think that you're doing something stealing some stealing some time with somebody. You know, sneaking off that forbidden fruit. That you know you ain't supposed to take a bite of. And you're messing up. And you can't hide it from God. God brings it to the forefront. He, he raises it up. Let somebody know so that they can step in. So I did. I stepped in and it stopped the affair. And so that was good. You know, but God will speak to you. You just got to be ready to listen. And when he's speaking to you, especially if he does it numerous times, listen to him and do what he wants you to do. He let me know. So, first thing Eli was trying to do, and God was trying to do, is teaching Samuel how to recognize the voice of the Lord. Number two, he was teaching him how to respond to God's calling. Now when God calls you, how do you respond? He said, speak Lord for your servant is listening. When God is speaking to you, and it can be quiet, you can ask him, Lord would you 
kind of go into detail with me, you know, because I'm not exactly sure what you want me to do with this. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that. Let the Lord know that you don't know exactly what he wants. And tell him, Lord, I need to know what you want me to do. He'll speak to you. He'll bring it to you. But why is that? Because if you belong to him, man plans his ways, but God is the one who orders his steps. Amen. Amen? So he will let you know what he wants you to do. Thirdly, he'll let you know the importance of the message that you are to deliver. Listen, when God calls you to do something and he's talking to you, it's heavy most of the time. It's a heavy thing that he wants you to do. And when I say heavy, what does that mean? That means that in your correspondence with each other, sometimes it's a deep subject. It's something rough. You know, and it's not happy. Many times it's not happy. Because why? Because God is trying to correct something that's wrong. But he needs you to hear what it is. And why does, you know, I'm going to tell you something. You know why he wants you to hear it? Because he wants you to know Amen. if he's saying something about it, that is something serious. Right. Amen? Amen? It's something serious. Amen. Also, the next one, number four, he was, he was also teaching him, he teaches Samuel about responsibility to repeat all that God has said. Because what did he say? What did Eli say? He says, look, he says, you tell me everything that God said and don't hold nothing back. Amen. So, Samuel had to just speak it right straight from his heart. And right from his memory, what God told him, every single thing. And that was tough for him because he loved Eli like a father. He loved Eli like a father. And that's kind of rough, but you got to tell your father that you're messing up. And God is getting ready to do something to you. Whoa. That's messed up. But you know something? Here's what I love about Eli. Even though Eli messed up and he was not doing what he needed to do to raise his sons, when he found out what God was going to do, what did he say? It is the Lord that it be as he wants. That's right, exactly. He accepted whatever it was that God was going to bring on him, the calamity that God was going to do. Number five, he was teaching him also not to be afraid. Because when God speaks to you many times, it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. I mean, when John, when John the Baptist came in and he was talking to Herod, he, right out in the open, he said, Herod, you've got your brother's wife. Now, Herod was not somebody that had a very good sense of humor. No. You know, you mess with Herod, you can mess around and get your head cut off, okay? He was just killing folks like it was free. You know, yeah, he was killing folks like it was free. Like it used to be back then. How does he think about that? Well, he sees it like a husband sees it, an adulterous wife. Isn't that something? God looks at Israel like he would like, like he would look at a wife. He loves them. And he is a jealous God. Amen? We need to understand that when God wants to communicate with his people corporately, he chooses someone to communicate through. Amen? Now, with this church here, I'll tell you something. I'm very, very careful about that. I get all kinds of folks coming through here talking about, I'm a prophet. I'm a prophetess. I'm all this. And, and, and I'm like, well, why are you telling me this? Are you trying to gain access to the congregation where they're all listening to you? Are, are you? are you trying to lift yourself up? Is that what you're trying to do? Because I don't think God would bring a prophet in here for me to listen to unless he'd tell me he's coming. Amen? Or if you come in here and you prove yourself by telling me something that a prophet would tell me. So there's all kinds of things that we got to watch out for that. But God chooses to speak through certain people. Now that would be his prophets. Someone who can hear his word. You gotta be able to hear his word. God wanted Israel to know how he felt. So what they were doing to him, he wanted them to know how they were hurting his feelings and, and, uh, and uh, provoking him to anger. Hosea 1, 
chapter 1 and 2, says that when the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take to yourself a wife of harlotry. Yeah. Ooh, a wife of harlotry. And to have children of harlotry. Can you imagine this? God looks at you and he says, Look, I want you to go out here and walk up and down the street here. Find you a hooker. And I want you to marry her. And I want you to have children by her. Do you have enough faith to do it? <laughs> I don't think I do, bro. I'm going to be real honest with you. Huh? That would be a rough one for me. And I don't think my wife is going to go for it. It was a good thing she ain't here. <laughs> okay. So, but God tells him, he says, I want you to get yourself a wife of harlotry and have children of harlotry for the land commits flagrant harlotry forsaken the Lord. Listen, what he's telling him is that I want you to see it to know how I feel. What you guys are doing. So go get a lady of ill repute, a red, red line district lady. And I want you to marry her and have kids with her and so forth. Because what's she going to do? She's going to go back out there and make money again. She ain't going to stay at home where, she, where you want her to be. She's going to have these kids, put these kids in your hands, and she's going to go back out there because that's what she probably would do. Hosea 3.1 says, Then the Lord said to me, Go again, love a woman who is loved by her husband, yet an adulteress. An adultery says, even as the Lord loves the sons of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love raisin cakes. Raisin cakes, what's that all about? Let me tell you what that's about. You could get yourself a hooker back in them days by giving them a raisin cake. Raisin cake was crack back then. <laughs> You know what I mean? It was cracked back then. You know, because we could go out here, right now you could go and get a strawberry and just give us some, some uh, no. She'll come and she'll come and be with you. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder now if I ever fall off the wagon, y'all, and go out there and give me somebody, I'm gonna give them some raisin cakes and see what they say. That probably isn't gonna work, is it? No, it's not gonna work. But back then it did work. That's what they were doing. Amen? Now, Ezekiel 4, 1 through 8. Let me read that to you real quick. Ezekiel 4, 1 to 8 says, Now you son of man, get yourself a brick. Place it before you. Inscribe a city on it, Jerusalem. Then lay siege against it and build a siege wall. Raise up a ramp. Pitch camps. Place battering rams against it all around you. He says, then get yourself an iron plate and set it up as an iron wall between you and the city and set your face towards it so that it is under siege and besieging. This is a sign to the house of Israel. As for you, lie down on your left side and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel on it. You shall bear their iniquity for the number of days and the July on it. For I have assigned you a number of days corresponding to the years of their iniquity. 390 days. Thus you shall bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. Now when you have completed these, you shall lie down a second time, but on your right side and bear the iniquity of the house of Judah. I have assigned it to you for 40 days, a day for each year. And then you shall set your face toward the siege of the Jerusalem, of Jerusalem with your arm bared and prophesy against it. Now behold, I will put ropes on you so that you cannot turn from one side to the other until you have completed the days of your siege. That's rough. I don't care what anybody says. You go to bed, lay down on your left side, how long is it going to be before you have to flip over? And 
But he's having them lay down there 390 days. That's a long time. He can't move. He's tying them up so that all he can do is lay there. You know that when you lay down on your side that many of your internal organs begin to sink? They sink down to wherever it is. Gravity pulls them down. It's just a messed up situation. So, God was calling him to do some horrendous things as a prophet. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're a prophet, and there's some people out here right now that claim to be prophets, how would you like God to make you do something like that? Amen? How would you like God to open his mouth and speak to you and say, you know what? Bruh, I want you to lay on your left side. I want you to just lay down and stay there. And then he's going to tie you up so that you can't move. You're going to stay that way. There's a lot of responsibility in being a prophet. And many times, I don't know about you, as much as God, I'd love for God to look and look and have me do things for him. I don't want nothing like that to happen. Of course, if he does it, I'll be obedient and do whatever he wants. That's rough. Amen? So, let me turn to another scripture. We're going to read Jonah. 1 through 12. 1, 1 through 12. Jonah. Jonah 1, 1 through 12. And for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and do this quickly. It says, And the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up, to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he went down to Joppa, found a ship which was going to Tarshish, paid the fare, and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. This is rough. Can you see what's happening here? Put yourself in that position. God wants you to go to Nineveh, but you don't want to go to Nineveh. You want to go to Compton. You want to go and hang out there with the boys, you know. But God is trying to get you to go to Nineveh. Verse 4. says, The Lord hurled a great wind on the sea, and there was a great storm on the sea, so that, so that the ship was about to break up. So God was trying to get their attention, wasn't he? In other words, don't run from me. I will, I will do this to you, and I'll do that to you. Number five, verse five says, Then the sailors became afraid, and every man cried to his God. And they threw the cargo, which was in the ship, into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone below into the hold of the ship, laid down, and had fallen sound asleep. So the captain approached him and said, how is it that you were sleeping? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps your God will be in concern about us so that we will not perish. Each man said to his mate, Come, let us cast lots so that we may learn on whose account this calamity has struck us. So they cast lots and the lot fell to Jonah. So they knew who was the culprit? They knew why this was happening. Amen? Verse 8. Then they said to him, Tell us now, on whose account has this calamity struck us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? Now, first of all, let me tell you something. People have already heard about the great things that God has done for Israel. They heard about all these things. So verse 9 says, He said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord God of heaven, who made the sea and dry land. Then the men became extremely frightened, and they said to him, well, How could you do this? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Amen? So they said to him, what should we do to you that the sea may become calm for us? For the sea was becoming increasingly stormy. Jonah said to them, pick me up, throw me into the sea, then the sea will become calm for you. 
For I know that on account of me, this great storm has come upon you. So you know what I love about Jonah? Jonah was copping to me. This is because of me. I messed up. I was running from the Lord. So this is what you got to do. Pick me up. Throw me into the sea. So what are they doing? They were turning Jonah over to God completely. Amen. You're either going to survive through God or you're not going to survive at all. Okay? So when we hear the word of the Lord audibly, we would be crazy to try to ignore it just because we may not like what he's uh, telling us. Since his word is spoken, that's it. So he's going to part the Red Sea. No, 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 no. He's already done that. Turn your ear. Listen for that soft, gentle breeze. Like what happened to Ezekiel. That carries the beautiful voice. Beautiful heart of God. My name is Anthony Stallworth and I'm a senior pastor at Central City Community Church of the Nazarene. We're located at 419 East 6th Street, downtown Los Angeles, on the corner of 6th and San Pedro. We are a church that serves the Skid Row community, so I'm sure that you can imagine that it's difficult for us to support our ministry with the tithes and the offerings. If today's message has helped you, perhaps you would like to come alongside Central City and prayerfully consider helping support this ministry by sending your tax-deductible gift to Central City Community Church, P.O. Box 13273, Los Angeles, California, 90013. Thank you.